This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruschi. Featuring retired FBI special agent Jennifer Coffindaffer. Well, here we go again, getting closer and closer to the possibility of a new Alec Murdoch trial with that evidentiary hearing that's set for the end of January. Lots of arguments on both sides, of course, completely opposite of each other. Uh, and one saying we're right, the other saying we're definitely right. And then the other come back saying, no, we're more right. And it continues. It'll be up for a judge to decide here very, very soon. Here to discuss those arguments and the validity of all of them for or against Jennifer Coffindaffer, retired FBI special agent. Jennifer, let's start with the arguments for Alec Murdoch because there seems to be quite a few. And if you're looking at it from an unbiased uh, perspective, yeah, they're are pretty valid. What what are your thoughts on the arguments that are being made right now and what are they arguing specifically? Well, the arguments by his side are are made very well. They're made very strong. It's going to be interesting to see because if you look at the rebut of those arguments, those are also made well and strong. It's going to be up to that judge to take that interpretation of the case law that they have and make it. But one, as an example, is that this jury, or I'm sorry, that they the Murdoch side does not need to show really any bias of the juror to obtain a new trial. That's huge. If the judge decides, yes, that's true, then uh, it's a lot easier burden. In other words, did it really matter what she said? Were any of those words really important to this juror's decision? The Murdoch says, no, it doesn't have to have meant anything to any of those jurors. It only has to have been said. Meanwhile, the prosecution is saying, well, that's baloney. It has to have had an impact uh, on their decision or else it's not meaningful. How do you prove impact, though? Because we're talking about getting into someone's mind at this point and going, yes, these words that someone said to me made an influence. And, and I, one can consciously say yes or no to that, but we're influenced all the time by suggestion subconsciously and we don't even know it so if you have the clerk of court that's walking around saying don't be fooled by alec murdoch maybe you already were uh, completely in in the the bag for believing that that he did commit these crimes evidence is pretty much there uh but maybe you aren't maybe would that could reinforce or it could also maybe cast a little bit of doubt uh, as well depending on what direction you're going and what your belief is uh what is the law on this? Because, yeah, you have the murder attorney saying, yeah, we don't need to, to prove that. The other side is, yeah, you, you need to, but that's in someone's mind. So we're going to we're going to prove that. That seems like a very difficult uphill battle to be going at. It's an uphill battle. But remember, they do have these jurors and it's been suggested uh, that there be an in-camera hearing with the judge that will be hearing this and really has sole discretion in this matter uh, in terms of evaluating both sides of the case and making a decision. So that to me, if if I'm the judge and have both case laws there that uh, support both sides to a certain degree, that's what is going to matter to me is what do those jurors say? Did they say they didn't think anything about it? Um, that's going to be, I think, really important for this judge to hear if it really had any impact at all. What kind of obligation do the jurors have to participate in any of this? Well, they're obligated. Uh, they're obligated to participate. They're going to likely be under subpoena. And, you know, these jurors are, it, first of all, it's got to be horrific for all they saw and had to go through for all that, all those weeks. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I think they are, law, you know, we know they are really law abiding citizens. They're like you and me. They're the average person. And uh, I think that they are willfully going to want to go and either back their decision and their deliberations or say, hey, listen, this really did concern me. And I'm glad I get the opportunity to come forward. Ultimately, it's a judge that makes this decision. It's not going to another jury or anything like that. So we have very different uh, courtroom dynamics going on here. The judge already 
knows what's going on, knows about all the other uh, allegations against Becky Hill, including the two sled investigations. One, of course, focusing on this very issue, the jury tampering, the other on improper use of her office. And we keep seeing more and more evidence come out there uh, that, who knows, that could end up in criminal charges at some point in time uh, for these uh, financial improprieties that uh, we've seen uh, evidence of. Uh, how much are those those other improprieties going to to play a role in the the judge's decision making, and, and and are they supposed to? I guess is the other question, or is she supposed to be uh, completely impartial, basing it only on the evidence of this specific issue, or can these other basically evidence of character come into play into her decision? Well, I think uh, the as far as the actual evidence concerning the jury tampering, she is going to be considering these details, what was said to these jurors, the impact that could have had. But this is the interesting piece to me. She has admitted to perjury. Mm -hmm. So she is likely going to testify, provide information to the judge on her own behalf, Miss Hill. And that's where this could come into play. Uh, because certainly they could introduce showing she has had, she has not been truthful in the past. Mm -hmm. And that's something we're always allowed to use. They call them crimes of moral turpitude. And that's where if you have somebody who has lied, committed fraud, you can use that to discredit them on the stand. The other thing, Tony, I wonder if she'll testify. What if she decides to plead the fifth? Yeah. Um, Murdoch's side is saying, no, no, no. She can't plead the fifth because she's already given a statement. Of course, the prosecution is saying the opposite. Uh, but I think Miss Hill will want to testify about this matter. Sick of the ads? We are too. Start listening with no commercials now and get access to all of our episodes in advance of everyone else. Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts or go to our podcast page and sign up now. True Crime Today Premium Plus. Sign up now.